Today, I'll learn what hash and salt really is. Welcome to Take Your Way Weekly. I'm your host, Steve Smith, aka Z Axis, and yes, me call me that. And thank you for listening, watching, and or subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to subscribe to the show if you want to continue getting great information, tips, and tricks on how to protect yourself. Go through all these technical issues and problems, these basically question and answer responses that I give you every single Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Now, let's get to the topic at hand. We are gonna be talking about hash and salt. Now, I'm not talking about the drug and I'm not talking about the food additive that you add to your stuff or inside your meals. I'm talking about things like MD5, SHA-01 and 2 and others that most people probably haven't heard of at all anyway. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, too often do websites store actual passwords, passwords, things that you don't want people to see in plain text, which means when that database gets breached, and it's when, not if, it's when that database gets breached, because it will happen, all the passwords of every single user is going to be in the cloud. This means that A, responsibility is on the user. Use a different password on every single website. Use a program like LastPass to generate random passwords on every single website so that when this website, and I did say when this website gets hacked and loses the database, you don't have to go around every single website changing your password and this is permitting that you hear about it in time before they get to your accounts. So when you are encountering a website a plain text offender by the way I have a link to that actual blog where you can actually post the plain text offenders and actually read all the ones that are actually storing your passwords in plain text when you want to know if they're doing that it is very easy when you registered to their website and you got the email saying thank you for registering to our stuff this is your account name fine account name doesn't matter you know your account name anybody can know your account name most of the time when you're in forums your account name's already shown anyway but it's not with the account name you need to get in it's with the password well in the email if you actually have your password there and not a password reset if you lost your password instead um, that is a very good sign that that website is nowhere near being secure anywhere near the minimum of having to be secure this is when you actually need to tell that website why are you not actually hashing my password in 2012 you really need to start protecting the passwords and you need to protect yourself don't store information on websites that store your password in plain text and remember very easy to identify they actually send your password in plain text by email and we're not going to go through all the problems of getting a email in plain text by email uh, password in email in plain text because it's complete gibberish to think that's actually secure so how about we go through the three states of data well you have encryption encryption is two-way it encodes and it can be decoded it requires a password or a passphrase it uses a mathematical algorithm that is usually computationally intensive and you can reverse engineer it based on brute forcing the password which will give you the actual information but for the most part most users staring at it see complete and utter gibberish hash is t is um, one-way encryption based on mathematics md5 was designed in the early 90s not even that recently a few years ago it became how do we say out of style out of life end of life not no longer usable as a means of protecting a password on a website and this is because it was made for how do we say weaker machines that performed basically fewer tasks than our current computers do now in order to protect MD5 you have to 
stop using it. So MD5 is a very simple mathematical equation that's not even computationally intensive that just basically one way encrypts your password into a hash. And a lot of websites use it to identify that you're actually talking to the right server and that I'm fine with, but protecting the password, that's something you shouldn't be doing. Then you have other things like SHA, SHA 0, 1, and 2, and you should be having SHA 3 coming out soon. These are computationally intensive hashing algorithms. This means it requires a lot of processor power to generate the hash. This is by far more secure and it should be using at least SHA-2 on a website in order to be really secure. But what does MD5 and SHA have in common with other hashing algorithms? Well, unlike encryption, which generates a unique blob of gibberish, depending on your password, MD5 and SHA and other hashing algorithms produce the same blob uh, after being entered regardless of the operating system or the programming language it's done in. This means that regardless of whether you're doing it in Windows, Linux, Mac, PHP, ASP, encoding with MD5, SHA-0, 1, or 2, or even 3, and all the other ones, will always produce the same result. This makes the ability of anybody to create a rainbow table a very real danger. MD5, SHA-0, 1, and 2, and I'm pretty sure two, by the way, all have rainbow tables, which means basically every dictionary word you can think of, including password, so if your password is password, please change it, they have been hacked, they have been broken. And that means that they're very, very fast to decode in these databases that get stolen. How do you prevent a stolen database from having the passwords broken? Well, you add salt to it. A salt can be fixed or random, and you should have both. So for people that have a lower end programming skill in your language of choice, you should be adding a string of gibberish to the end or to the beginning of the password. That way you change the end result of the hash. Now, since you're gonna be using that same mathematical hashing algorithm anyway, for the login and the registration and the change password form, you will always produce the same result all the time. Because in the actual database, what you want is the result of the hash and not the actual password. You confirm the password is valid by comparing the result of the hash every time the person logs in. This is what makes it more secure. You don't have your password in the database when it's done correctly. You have the result of putting your password inside that equation in the database. That's what allows you to log into a properly done website. Now, like I said, if you're able to get an email with your password in it, it's not good. Websites that hash your password at the very minimum require you to use a lost password form that requires you to go through a form to give a new password. They may even require you to go through a link only sent to you by email. That's not secure, but that is certainly better than sending the password in the email. This way, you're actually more ultimately secure. Now, you can't know if it's MD5 clean SHA-0, SHA-1, or even SHA-2 clean, no salt. You can't know if they even add salt. You can't know if they use random salt. You can't even know if they put the random salt in the database, which they shouldn't. They be, should be generating it on the fly. So the only thing you can do to protect yourself is A, don't use websites that send you your password in your email, and two, Use a different password for every single website. Now, if you want a tool that will help you manage your passwords, I strongly suggest that you use LastPass. If you encounter a website that uses a plain text password storage, I strongly suggest that you actually go to plaintextoffenders.tumblr.com.
And heck, even before you register, you can go through that whole list and see if it's already there. That, by the way, comes from uh, Shannon Morris on Hack5, and I have a link to that specific episode in the show notes. And for the most part, just remember, change your password often, don't use the passwords more than once on any other website or device, and you should theoretically be fine. Most of all, don't put that much personal information into a website anyway. I don't care how secure it is. You shouldn't be putting your whole life into a single website. That means when it gets breached, they'll have more information to steal your identity with. So next week, I'm going to be talking about, again, passwords, but I'm going to be talking about Windows, the user accounts, boss passwords, and how to prevent yourself from being stuck outside of your Windows session. Tips, tricks, and tools you can use to prevent yourself from being stuck outside your computer and being required to go to a friend or even a computer store to get it fixed. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to TQA Weekly for more information like our show notes, our Android application, how to get your own TQA Weekly gear and apparel. Heck, even go through our weekly survey that we have on our website and view all the episodes that we have done in the last two years. It's tqaweekly.com. Stay safe and online. Have a great day.